Absolutely. All right. Well, good afternoon and hi, everyone, and welcome to Topical Tuesday. We are lucky enough to have Jane here from School Library Connection, and she is going to take over. Um, if you haven't already muted your microphone, please mute your microphone and um, utilize the chat feature, and I will keep um, apprised of it while we are meeting. I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing my screen. And I'm going to let Jane take it away with School Library Connection. Great. Hello, everyone. Uh, like Lisa said, I'm Jane Kalina. I'm from School Library Connection, and I work on the PD program there, including um, School Library Connection, which I actually came and presented to you all in 2018, I think, about two years ago in, the, in one of your summer trainings. Um, and now I have a new version of SLC to share and I'm um, just getting the um, sharing permissions set up, but it doesn't look like my screen is showing yet. There it goes. Okay. All right. And um, so do you see that you see my whole screen? So if I now start this, it should show. I haven't used Google Meets a lot, very often, so please let me know if I'm um, if you can't see something. Can you see the slideshow that says "Welcome to School Library Connection"? No, I'm only seeing your uh, toolbar. Oh, okay. Well, that's not very helpful. Um, my apologies here. I'm presenting, and then this is what I want to show. Let's see. Do you see now the, the website itself? Nope. Okay. You might want to choose either a window or a Chrome tab. Try that. All right. Settings. Yeah, you Sorry. might. Could, where, yeah, where where do I see? Where do I um, have the options of what I'm sharing? If you put your mouse down all the way to the bottom and then scroll over to the right. It should say. It says Jane Khalil is presenting. You need to stop presenting and then try it again and okay. pick a window or a tab. Got and it. Then okay. That's the only way you can get the choice back. So now I can pick a window. I can select um, okay now are you seeing the we sign that says welcome yes. to school library connection okay. hey, welcome to school library connection okay um, sorry about that so yes welcome and uh, as I mentioned um, here today you've, you've had school library connection for I think about two years and we just have done a big update to the site and now have some new features and new organization along with all of the great content that was already there. So I'm just going to share a little bit about um, SLC and then take a tour of the site um, to show you where you'll find each piece. And then I have an announcement that I think has already been shared about uh, an exciting PD event uh, this coming November. A little more detail about that. And um, if there's any questions that haven't been answered by the end, then there's time for some Q&A too. So um, just wanted to sort of give some ideas for when you might go to School Library Connection, which is an online professional learning area specifically for school librarians. And so um, sometimes maybe you are trying something new in your library, you're looking to advance a particular part of your program and you want some more ideas or more background. And that's a great time to go to School Library Connection and um, do a little bit of research. Maybe you're trying to expand your makerspace program. That would be something that you could um, look for resources on School Library Connection. Or maybe you've come across a problem. You're noticing that your students are feeling more anxious of late and you wanna figure out how to incorporate some mindfulness activities into the library. That would be another you know, 
reason that you might go into School Library Connection to learn from librarians who have already tried that and, and see what advice they have. Um, and then also we offer PD certificates for some of the um, video components of the site, including our webinars and online workshops, which I will uh, be showing as part of this. So that could also be a motivator for coming to School Library Connection. Um, and then I was interested before getting into the tour just to know a little bit about like what topics you might, you, you know, that are in attendance here might think about going to investigate if you are needing more professional uh, learning support. So are there any topics that you are currently confronting in your library? Maybe if you could share in the chat, then we can see and that will help as I'm looking at the, um, at the, the tour of the site. Okay, yeah, virtual environment, that makes a lot of sense right now, given our reality. God. Virtual book club, great. Okay, you can feel free to keep adding some ideas as, um, as we're in there. And now I'm going to share the uh, School Library Connection site itself. So just to make sure I'm doing it right, I'm going to stop presenting and represent the correct window here. All right, so can you see the screen um, that says welcome SLC subscribers now? Not yet. Not yet, okay. It doesn't say anyone is presenting, so. Oh, so I need to press that again, okay. Oh, it's not giving me the option. Uh, maybe I need to allow. If you click the present now, maybe a Chrome tab will work. Is it showing up now? It's there we go. Perfect. Okay, great. Um, so when you log into School Library Connection, you'll see that some of the um, organization has changed and also some of the design in an attempt to make it easier for people to use. And right now I'm logged in with the Palm Beach credentials. So this should be exactly what you see when you um, log on, including some of the personalized lists that exists within your account. Um, and then to navigate around the site, there's a few options. There's the, the top bar, which is always available at the top of the screen. And then obviously you can also scroll down the site. And so we now have um, a start learning section, which is targeted to where you might be in your library career. So if you're just beginning, um, we would suggest checking out the Learn the Basics page. If you have a couple of years under your belt in the library or more, grow your skills. And if you're supervising other librarians, we've got a special corner um, for supervisors there. But if we if we look at one of these pages, uh, we'll go into Grow Your Skills, you'll find a variety of formats um, of infor information that's sort of featured content at the moment. And of course, there's also the search bar, which we'll talk about in more detail in a little bit. But within the Grow Your Skills page, um, there's always a different featured resource or set of resources at the top. Um, so this one is talking about how you might use older students to help um, mentor younger students and how that can bring educational value to the older students as well um, from an experience from a, li a librarian who's working um, in the Southeast. And then we have our courses. So these used to be called workshops. The, the main difference now is just a change in the name and also how some of the information is displayed to make it a little bit easier to navigate. So this course, Primary Sources for Elementary, is presented by Tom Bober, and, and he's actually the one that's going to be doing a um, personalized PD event for elementary, those of you that are elementary librarians, uh, at the beginning of November. But within this course, you can see that there's a series of short-ish video lessons um, here. And each lesson is then accompanied by the transcript, if you'd prefer to, um, I didn't mean to press play, sorry, uh, to read along or to read it instead, as well as an activity that lets you 
try out some of the ideas that are talked about in the video lesson in your own library. And then um, after you've gone through the course, there's the option to take a PD certification quiz. And this opens in a new window. You answer about 10 questions and it will um, download for you a PDF certificate with your name on it that um, assuming that you get 80% or better on the quiz to show that you have passed this course on primary sources for elementary students. Um, so that's one of the areas that you can explore more and to see all of the courses. This here, you can go through the carousel. Um, you can also select show all and it will show the different course options um, that we have. And so these courses are going to be different whether you're in the Grow Your Skills library versus or page versus the Learn the Basics page has some more um, sort of pieces that are targeted at people that are beginning their library career and have maybe more basic information. So um, you'll find different courses in both of those places. And then below the courses, you can also use this, this bar here to jump around to the different sections of the page. So if we want to go back to courses, down to webinars, um, these are live recorded events, so you can attend them live. We have them about once a month, or you can watch the recording at your leisure. You have access to them 24-7. And the webinars kind of talk, ta sorry, tackle a topic um, in a little bit more of a specific way. So in this case, we're looking at, they were looking at problem-based learning. Um, in August, we did a webinar um, with two presenters from Texas who were talking about how to create a more inclusive collection. Um, and so that conversation is recorded along with their slides and all of their resources are provided here to help um, use some of the techniques that they talk about in this, in this particular webinar. And again, that also has the quiz option up there. And you can see all of the webinar options with that same show all uh, button there. And these are organized in um, most recent to least recent. But the topics, you know, are uh, some of them are really evergreen topics that will be useful, whether you're teaching in a remote environment now or, um, you know, in another year when we're back in the classroom or less. Um, and then below that, we've got some featured articles as well as a specific article search. So the the top search bar searches the whole site of, of any type of content. This search bar searches just the article. Um, and then we have some of the more recently published articles featured here, um, including this one, Operation Collaboration Growing Readers, which is um, talks about a new program that these three librarians work together to create to help introduce um, a better reading culture into their school district. Uh, we also have some other articles that are highlighted sort of along a the theme and um, information about additional books and other professional development resources there. So that's kind of overall what you find on the um, Learn the Basics and Grow Your Skills, but the, the types of articles or the webinars or the courses will be different depending on which of those pages you're on. Um, another area to explore is the Explore Topics. And so these are each, each of these pages is sort of headed up by a particular librarian um, who is passionate about this subject and has a lot to say about it and is also curating resources to help deepen other people's understandings about the topic. So for information literacy, Jackie Whiting is a librarian um, in Connecticut, and she's looking at different topics within information literacy. And these change about every six weeks. Um, so this first subtopic here, understanding bias, looks at how do you teach students to recognize their own bias? How do you teach them to recognize um, the angle that people are coming at with, in, coming with in their own media that they might be presenting um, or a particular resource? And so you get Jackie's thoughts here in this um, beginning article. And then below that, there are a number of additional pieces that um, reinforce some of these ideas, including lesson plans and webinars and articles um, that that you can use to help inform your own practice. And then um, since this is a new area right now, we just have one subtopic per topic page, but these are getting built out so that each uh, about every six weeks, there'll be another subtopic added on 
here. And you can switch between the different topics, including reading, teaching research, research, collaboration, equity and inclusion, and curriculum using this menu up here. And each one um, has a different page editor that's responsible for sort of bringing together these, these ideas. So um, this one, this month on special education collaboration has some really interesting ideas about how to collaborate when you're um, working with the special education department in your school. Additionally, you can find the reviews page here, which is a um, repository of all the reviews that we publish on SLC. So you can search for them, use different filters if you're looking for a particular type of book to work with or to use with students or whether you're considering purchasing it, adding it to your collection. Um, the same for professional resource reviews. There's also some highlighted lists of recommended titles here. These change every week. Uh, and then we have curriculum resources, which are packages using recently published young adult books and um, offering in addition to the review, there's also information on how to teach with it, including specific lesson plans. And um, a section that features specifically digital resources that you might be considering adding to your collection. And um, the last area before looking at the search bar is the My Place. And the top item I want to show here is these resource lists, which um, can be created. And you can create a new list to collect resources that are uh, of interest to you. Um, but do note that they are shared with everybody who uses the same login information. And so we have some uh, lists here that bring together resources on these particular topics. And it looks like Holly Ann's created one um, for a course that you're running here. So that's an easy way to have a collection of resources that you can access and that you can share with others uh, within the district. And so going now to the search bar here, um, Again, searching in this top bar, which is always accessible, brings up every type of resource that you uh, that we that we publish. So not just articles, but also webinars, courses, lesson plans. Um, and here you might search. So um, I'll try searching the term virtual at the top and see what we come up with here. And there's different ways to filter and sort. So um, sorting by relevance is going to use algorithms to first search the title, then the summary, um, the author name, et cetera, then the full text to show you a list that way. But you can also sort by category or by date. So if you sort by date, you're going to see the um, most recent pieces that were published that have this terminology. So um, here we've got an article here, Book Connections and Intersections, Connecting Readers with Books, Authors, and Illustrators, All Virtually. Um, so that's an idea to help, or contains ideas uh, to help you work with students in a virtual setting, uh, including different read aloud options, uh, connecting to authors and illustrators, sharing resources from public librarians. Uh, and this is um, by Sylvia Vardell, who's a professor in Texas of library science. And if you want to save the articles, you can save them to a Google Drive account. Um, or a Dropbox. You can also email it to yourself or to a colleague. You can print them. Uh, the citation is going to bring up all the different styles, and you can also export it to EasyBib or ReferenceWorks. And then like, this is the button that I mentioned before to add it to a resource list if you want to you know, create a list of articles that you find about teaching virtually to help you um, come back to them easily. And then to show some of the, the filters that are available here. Um, so you could filter by lesson plan. This overall search also does bring up the reviews. And then you can filter by level and as well as uh, year that it was published here. So if we just want to see the things from 2020, then that's going to um, pull up these, these articles that are more recent. Um, so at this point, I'd love to open it up to questions. And I um, don't know if it's easier to use the chat or to have people turn on their microphones to ask a question. 
Let's go ahead and have people turn on their microphones to ask a question. All right, go ahead. If you have questions, go ahead and open up your mic and ask away. I'm not sure. I I can't figure out where to find the just the, in a regular um, uh, bar. Like just type in schoolconnections.com, schoollibraryconnections.com, schoollibraryconnectionsingular.com. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'm gonna go ahead and um. All right. Okay. Share a tab so I can show them. Okay. Yeah. Yes, I don't have the sort of portal portion that you have. Yeah. All right. So if you have an export in your per in your portal, if you type in school library connection, this tile will come up, and you click on it, and it is single sign on, and you can access school library connection easily. So if you're outside of the portal, right? Like you have to have an account. Is that correct? You have an account if you click the portal tile. Because I'm asking for outside of here. Yeah, you have to go through the portal to okay. access the, the, what we're paying for. Okay, yeah, gotcha. It's not free on the open web. It's a okay. subscription that gotcha. we pay for on your behalf. Okay, perfect. Thank you. All right, any other questions? Anything you want us to demonstrate? We are really excited about having this resource. Um, those of you that, you know, maybe you haven't um, been to a lot of uh, conferences at the, at particularly the national level, but a lot of these articles are written by people that are publishing and presenting at the national level. The, some of the material are authors that publish for ABC Clio and um, Greenwood and so forth that are connected to School Library Connection. Um, it's really a, an excellent resource. And it's so hard for us now to have as much face-to-face -face training as we would like. And it's very expensive to bring in speakers. So we, we're super excited to have um, this resource for you to in, to in, engage in and um, and using the reviews that's a handy source for finding new material that's been re reviewed. School Library Connection is considered a professional reviewing source under our um, selection policy, so it's a tool for that as well. Yes, and I um, would also someone also asked how often is the site updated, and that's a great question. Um, we update different sections of it every week. So um, there's constantly new things being added to it, uh, in the, especially in the articles section. Um, but also we have about monthly a new course gets added and also a new webinar. Um, and the reviews get added, new reviews get added every week also. And if you haven't had a chance to explore the webinars, I've had a chance to attend a couple of them live and they are really wonderful. And they're about an hour. And if you can't see it live and you register for it, a recording will be So it's a really great uh, for professional learning. And I did I did want to share that we've got um, two additional, let's see if I can just pull it up here. Resume my presentation. No, I don't. I would stop no. sharing, reshare it again. I don't it, put it down at the bottom left for me. Okay. Um, well, if you click the happening, but I should work. Okay. Nothing. Nothing's coming up, but I'm pressing the button. Uh, so I'll just share with my words that uh, this coming uh, next Monday, we have a webinar on using techniques from art research to both bring in more objects into your library teaching. And she's gonna talk specifically about how to do it virtually as well. And in addition to how do you use, uh, the, pre the presenter is a librarian in Florida who is also a um, art historian and an art authenticator. So she spends her summers looking at pieces of art and uh, figuring out if they are fakes or if they are, you know, really by Jackson Pollock. 
Uh, and so she takes some of those skills and uses them to help teach in her library setting as well. So that uh, next Monday, we there's a webinar on that. And then additionally, the on October 28th, we have a webinar on how to take uh, maker ideas and use them in a remote setting or a hybrid setting. So um, how can you create makerspace activities when you're not in the library's makerspace itself? And so that's again on October 28th. And um, to hear about the webinars that we are hosting, we announce them via our, our email and um, you can sign up to receive those emails uh, at this. I'll just share this. Um, web link here in the chat, maybe if I can find the media again, um, where you can sign up to receive emails and where it uh, will we'll show you the upcoming webinars that we have. And then again, those are recorded. So if you can't make it on the, on the actual day, they all get added into our School Library Connection website so you can watch them you know, at any point down the road when it's convenient for you. And where would we find the upcoming um, reviews on School Library Connection? The upcoming or, or, reviews? Sorry, the upcoming oh, webinars. Okay. Um, on the site itself, we actually don't uh, have a spot at the moment to share them. So we, we use our email and also the Twitter to share the, um, the announcement. So that I'll just share the um, Twitter handle as well um, for where we we show the announcements, but then the recordings are included on the website. Wonderful. Any other questions we could address? I have a comment um, for the portal. If you haven't already, you should right click and save it to your favorites because then it's always easy and accessible. You don't have to hunt for where it is. So if you just right click on that tile and then save to favorites, then it's always there. Great idea. All right. Great. And then I think um, in on November 3rd, you will be having, if you're an elementary librarian, a special presentation from Tom Bober, who is a librarian in Missouri and also an author. And he works, he was the teacher in residence at the Library of Congress. Um, so he has extensive experience in incorporating primary sources into his teaching with elementary students. And he's going to share some techniques and strategies and specific ideas for how to do that. And that's on November 3rd. Yep, of course, well, of course time. E -learning, we hope you will sign up and join us. It, if you've never taught with primary sources, it is so much fun. It, it's it's teaching, it takes teaching to a whole new level and the inquiry process um, is so powerful with the primary sources. So we hope you'll sign up and um, join us for that on the third. Lisa, is that at, at the regular time, like, you know, 2.15, 2.30? It is not, it is at 10 a.m. That, that November 3rd day is a PDD slash duty day. And it's just oh, okay. An hour. okay. So it's at 10 a.m. and it's an hour of your time. And I know that you will really enjoy Tom Bober. I've sat through some workshops with him and he is phenomenal. Uh, we're so lucky to have him. Do we sign up through e-learning? E-learning. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Um, if you don't already follow us on Twitter, please follow us on Twitter um, and tag us in your posts. We love to see what's going on in your libraries and the creative things that you're doing these days. Um, if you want to get points for Topical Tuesday, please sign up in eLearning. The course is live. Um, and you can get two points for each session. The follow-up is one culminating activity for the series of webinars. And you can earn up to, I believe it's 14 points. And next Tuesday, or sorry, in two weeks, join us again at 2.30 for um, diversity audits with teaching books. Um, another great resource at our portal, and they're going to be coming and talking to us about how we can use their tool to conduct diversity audits of our collections. So we're really excited about that. And with that, I'm going to stop recording.